Today, we are going to look at some HR data and perform 10 types of analysis on it. Here are the analysis themes. We're going to look at these 10 things. And to support me in this process, I have got some sample HR data here. You can download this particular file using the link in the video description and follow along. So let's go. Before we get into the actual thing, I just want to make a note that I'm assuming you are already familiar with Power BI environment and do know how to get around this particular software. If you are completely new with Power BI, then I have got another video on my channel that walks through the introduction, introductory steps of Power BI. So please watch that before proceeding on this video. Otherwise, a lot of things won't make any sense. So the step one is to import the data. As our data is an Excel workbook, I'm going to use this option and bring the data. So here is the data worksheet. It looks all right, but I noticed that Power BI hasn't picked up the header row correctly. So everything is called column one, column two, column three like that. So I'm going to head into Power Query through the transform data option and quickly make some adjustments. Let's click on this use first row as header option. That fixes all the headers. While we are here, I'm going to turn this date of join into a date and some of these other number fields into numbers. Finally, I'm just going to rename this table as staff and load it into Power BI. Here are the analysis themes again. I'll put a listing of this in the video description as well. But our first topic is how many people are there in each job? This data is the data for a chocolate company. So let me quickly show you what we have here. We have got the names, employee ID, gender of the employee, what is their educational qualification, the date of join, job title, salary, age and leave balance. To answer the first question, we need to know for each of these job titles, how many people are there. I'm going to make a measure here first to help us get the head count. As each row is one employee, we can create a new measure and count the number of rows in the staff table. So head count is count rows staff. And we can use a bar chart to visualize this kind of a thing. So we'll put this and make it nice and big. And here we are going to use job title on Y axis and head count on X axis. So we'll get all of this information in a nice graphical format. We can see that packaging associate is our most popular job with 22 people in it and marketing specialist. We have 10 people. Let's go to the next one, which is gender breakdown of the staff. I'm going to build this into a separate page. So we have got Q1 and now Q2. And to understand something like gender, we can use a pie chart. And in this pie chart, I'm going to put gender and headcount and we'll get the breakdown information. In this data set, we only have two genders, female and male. And this is how the breakdown looks like. Now, this is the overall picture of the data. What if I wanted to look at this for a specific job title? What we can do is bring in the job title as a slicer. So I'm going to put this slicer here. And in this slicer, I'm going to add job title. Now we can see all the job titles and if I pick something like packaging associate, we can see the breakdown here. It doesn't really change. Let's go to production manager, 50 production operator is 50, 50. If you want to multi select, you can also hold down the control key on your keyboard and select all the options that you want. The third one is age spread of the staff. For this, a column chart would be perfect on the X axis. Let's put age. And on the Y axis, we can put head count. Now I was expecting some sort of a histogram kind of a thing. But what happened is for each individual age, we are getting a little tiny bar. This is not appropriate. So what we want is we want to take the ages and group them into buckets. So maybe five years at a time. To do such a thing, you can right click on the age column and then select a new group option. And here it will create age bins for you and then it will set up the value. You can adjust the bin size. I'm going to give five years here. And then when you click OK, Power BI introduces a new column into your data called age bins. So let's take this out and put age bins there and we will get the distribution of our staff like this. 
so this is how it looks this is my overall age bins now if i want to break this down by gender we can take the gender and put it into legend and the same information gets broken down by gender as we are using a stacked column chart this is how that looks if i want i can use a clustered column chart and i'll get separate columns for each gender let's just say you're not happy with either of these what you can also do is you can go back to stacked and instead of using legend for gender if you take this and put it into small multiples you'll get two graphs one for each gender of course it also makes two extra blank ones so i'm gonna go here and select the small multiple option and just say give me in two rows one column so now i have got the distribution of female and male employees we can see how the distribution changes for example we have a few younger females but not so in the male case but overall the distribution kind of looks same across the data the next one is which jobs pay more so far we are only scratching the surface of analysis but now we are getting into some interesting ones to answer this question i'm going to first create a measure that tells me what is the average of the salary that way we can look at each job title and the average number of average salary in that job title to come to a sense of which jobs have higher averages so we'll create a new measure here Let's make a table for this. In this table, we are going to put job title and then average salary. So this is how the average salary looks for various job titles. If I apply the descending sort order on this, we can see that product manager has a really high average salary, whereas packaging associates have a very low average. When you are looking at average, you might come to the conclusion that product manager is the higher paid job. but you should not go into such conclusion directly you should examine how many people are actually doing that job as well because if there is only one person doing the job then the average is not really significant so we are going to add head count as well to this table to see how many people are there as you can see we do have a decent number of people here 16 people and the average is 82000 so that kind of tells you a better story about the data another way to enhance this picture is you can also add the minimum and maximum salary in the job so that you can see the range at which these job salaries are spread so let's do that we can add couple more measures to calculate minimum and maximum min salary is equal to minimum of the salary field and max salary is the maximum of the salary let's add these values as well so we can see that the average is 82000 16 people but the minimum is 80 and maximum is 85 so they are in a very tight range and the average is also 82 so this kind of tells you a better story whereas packaging associates here 33 average the minimum is 28 maximum is 36 the next one is top earners in each job for this i'm going to do it in two steps first i'm going to copy our head count by job title graph control c on this and paste it here and then when i pick a job i would like to see the top 3 people in that particular job here as a table so we are going to put a table here in this table let's add name employee id gender and salary now as i just want to see their salary i'm using the direct salary field here but i see that the formatting is not there so i'm just going to quickly jump into the data view pick the salary column and adjust the currency formatting there and when i go back now i see the currency formatting correctly let's take out the totals from this table and now this table is showing me everybody whereas what we want is just the top 3 employees in that particular job title so i'm going to select this go to the filter panel and from here where it says employee id is all expand this out and from basic filtering change to top n and then say i want the top 3 people by salary so you just drag and drop the salary there and apply the filter you're going to get the top 3 employees across the company 
Now see the fun part. If I now pick a specific job like packaging associate here, this table is going to show me the top three employees in the packaging department. Chocolatiers, product managers. This is because Power BI is interactive by nature. So if I have got two visuals on a page, I can pick a specific visual and the other visuals respond to that by filtering down the data. Okay, a quick homework break. Just as we did the top three employees here, can you make the bottom three as well? And then if so, who are the bottom three earning chocolatiers? Post the names in the comments. I have another homework for you. If you are enjoying this video, can you give it a like and subscribe to the channel? As a data analyst, I couldn't help but notice that about 80% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribing to the channel. So if you really like what I do, subscribe to the channel. That way it helps me as well as it tells me that these are the kind of videos that you enjoy. So I'll try to make more of them. Let's go on. The next one is qualification versus salary. So we would like to look at employee qualifications and how much they are paid and see if there is some sort of a trend or pattern going on with that. For this kind of a thing, a scatter chart is perfect. So I'm going to add a scatter chart. And ideally, what I want to do is I want to show a dot in such a way that on the x axis we have got salaries. So a dot at 30,000 would be here, whereas a dot at 80,000 would be there. And then I want to show, show multiple lines of dots, one for each educational qualification. So I'm going to take X axis and put salary into that. Right now there is only one dot. So I'll go and click on this little thing and then say don't summarize. This way all the salaries will be one dot at a time. So all the distinct salaries. And then we're going to take educational qualification and put that into Y axis not able to even drop it there this is because what happens is educational qualification is actually a text value we can see it here it's text value so power bi doesn't like that to be on the access values one way to cheat this is we can select the chart take educational qualification and put it into legend that way each type of qualification is colored differently but because all the dots overlap, it's hard for us to tell what is what. So a good thing to do would be if we can actually code the qualifications, one for diploma, two for high school or something like that, then we can see these values here. To do such a thing, we can go back to Power Query and add a simple rule there. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to transform data and select the educational qualification column right click and then say add as new query. This is going to introduce a new query with just the qualification column. From this column, I'm going to remove all the duplicates so we can see all the qualifications that we have. We only have four qualifications. And at this point, I'm just going to assign numbers to them. So we'll first transform this to a table. Sort this in ascending order. So we have bachelor's degree, diploma, high school and master's degree. Ideally, I want to give the numbers in the order of education that people normally acquire. So you have got high school, diploma, bachelor and master's. So we're going to go to the add column and click on conditional column and simply write some rules. We'll call this as qualification ID and then we'll say if column one equals Actually, we're going to be a little bit lazy. I'm going to say column one begins with H. That'll be high school. Then it needs to be one. Else if column one begins with D then it's two begins with B, then it's three. Else it's four. That's going to give you these numbers. We're going to name this as and we now have a qualification dimension table. Um, We'll just rename the query and load this guy back into Power BI. So now we have got two tables, qual and staff. Let's go to the table view here and quickly link up qualification with education qualification so that we can get the ID number into the visuals. Let's go back here and uh, take out this and from qual use the qualification ID on the Y axis. 
doesn't like it either. Power BI is still not letting me do that. This is because this is called ABC123. So we just need to change this to a whole number and let's hope this time it works. Okay, now the dots have split into four sets of dots and I just need to add qualification as legend so we can see them in different colors. Uh, the dots getting cut off at the bottom and top. So I'm going to quickly go to the graphs properties y axis and the minimum will be zero and maximum will be five. And this is how the salaries are spread as this data is kind of randomly made up. There is no distinguishable pattern here, but when you apply this kind of a logic with your own data sets, you will certainly see some useful and intelligent patterns emerging from your data. The next one is staff growth trend over time. For this kind of a thing, a line chart is perfect. So I'm going to add line chart and onto the X axis, we are going to bring our date of join. And on Y axis, we are going to use headcount. So this is the headcount over a period of time, but this is how many people have joined the company each year. So 2018, we had 23 people join, then 29, 29 again, and then it kind of went down to 20 in 2023. We're just halfway through the year. But this is actually how it happened individually. What we want to see is kind of like a running total. To get the running total here, you can create a measure using the calculate formula. So let's attempt that. I'm going to call this as cumulative headcount. And what we want to do is we want to calculate how many people have joined up until that time since the start of the company. So here is the measure that we can create. We'll start by saying where current date is the last date of staff date of join. This will tell you as of that time in the execution, what is the latest date that we are looking at? So for example, at 2021, this date would be 31st of December, 2021. Then we are going to calculate headcount by first removing any filter on the date of join. So staff date of join, we are going to say all, get me everything. And then the date of join needs to be less than or equal to current date. So then we are telling apply the condition such that how many people have been here up until the latest date. When Power BI or Power Pivot executes this, it's going to calculate the cumulative headcount up to that point in time. So then we just going to select this visual and add the cumulative headcount as well. Now you can see that even when I add it, I'm going to take this out for a minute and then add it again. We are not getting cumulative headcount. It is still just the same way as the actual headcount. This is because when you have dates on the axis, literally dates in your data and put the date, it actually creates a hierarchy of dates. So you have got date of join broken down into year, quarter, month and day. Whereas our measure only looks at the date itself. It's not considering the hierarchy aspect. So we are going to select this chart and using this button here, instead of date hierarchy, switch back to date of join. This is going to break the headcount into two columns. One is actual headcount, how many people joined on each individual day and how the cumulative headcount has been. So we are now at 161 people and this is how the company has grown. You can see some sudden surges in the growth, like for example, um, in September 2018, to December, we kind of ramp it up quite quickly. And then that's how that growth trajectory has been. And I can take out the original headcount. So we are only looking at the cumulative headcount over the last six odd years of this company. The next one is a little bit fun. We would like to filter our employees by specifying the first letter of the employee. So if I say S, yes, I want to see all the employees whose name begins with S. Yes in a table format with some nice, neat graphs and visuals. As you can see in the data, we only have the name of the employee. We, we don't have their first letter. So we now need to generate a column that tells us what is their first letter. Again, we can go back to transform data, which will take us to Power Query and select the name column, add column, extract first letters, and then just say one, which will give you the very first letter. Click OK and you have got first characters here as a column. 
let's close and apply this and we would have the first letters as an option in the data so we're going to add a slicer bring first letters into that and i'm just going to add a table to show our employees so we're going to put employee id name job title salary and let's just uh, sort this in the descending order and also make the salary look pretty so i'm going to use conditional formatting click on the salary conditional formatting and add a data bar around it while i like data bars i don't like the fact that the data bar actually overlaps the numbers so i'm just going to look at our maximum salary which is about 85000 and go back to the data bar and instead of leaving the minimum and maximum as automatic i'm just going to set custom here minimum would be zero and maximum let's make it 150000 this way the bar kind of sits to the left hand side of the data and when you expand it out you can see that clearly now this is showing me everybody but let's just select yes and we can see all the s employees and their salaries neatly arranged in the descending order we can go to k or h for fun let's count how many people are there with that letter so we can add a card visual and in this card we can just put the head count that will say six people so six people have h as their beginning letter you can go to l you can go to r the next one is leave balance analysis we can see that our employees have a leave balance ranging from two days all the way up to 37 days and we would like to see what is the average leave balance as well as count how many people have excess of four weeks of leave balance that is more than 20 days of leave balance because if somebody is just saving up their leave and not using it that could indicate that they may be overworked or tired or fatigued so we just want to measure that and kind of see if that is getting out of hand so let's create a couple of measures one is average leave balance and the next one is lbl over 20 days so this is calculate head count we just want to count how many people have more than 20 days leave balance and then say leave balance greater than 20. let's make a bar graph for this in this bar graph i want to see job title and average leave balance so packaging associates surprisingly have a very high average leave balance of 18 quality control has 15.1 apart from this number here i would also like to see what is the number of people that have more than 20 days balance so we would like to first make this graph look a little bit pretty that means i want to actually add a label here and kind of change the colors so we're going to go here and introduce data labels gonna take out the x-axis now and change the colors from here so now that we have that information let's introduce the additional information of how many people have more than 20 days as a tooltip on this so we'll select this visual get the lbl over 20 days and then drop it into the tooltips box here that way every time you point you will see how many people in that particular job group have more than 20 days leave balance so 18 here and then six people let's copy the gender graph and put it here as well that way if i select a specific gender i can see how the leave balance varies for that gender very quickly how cool is this all right we are at the home stretch now we are going to conclude this with a quick hr dashboard for this i'm going to add a new page and in this page first thing i'm going to do is change the background color i like to add a little bit of background on my dashboards that way they look better so we'll go to canvas background and pick a dull color like this and here let's start by showing some of the key indicators of our data we have already calculated many of them but if you want you can add new measures based on the data i'm going to use the new card visual for this this will give you a few more options to customize the way things look so in this i'm going to add headcount average salary average leave balance and leave balance over 20 days now you can see that when you add four you can kind of resize and everything kind of falls place quite easily so we'll come back here and then lay out orientation we are going to make it vertical space them out a bit more 
and for each card i'm going to customize how these things look so we're going to fill them with a strong color like that So these four cards tell me what's going on at the overall level, how much is our headcount, average salary, leave balance, and how many people have more than four weeks of vacation accumulated. Next, let's see how the breakdown of staff is by departments or job titles. So we already have this graph here. I'm gonna select this control C and paste it here and make some adjustments to it. Let's bring the gender information as well. Let's add the age distribution as well. I'm going to take out the small multiple on this and let's again adjust some of these things. One of the really easiest things to do, but most people ignore this in Power BI is setting the titles. So make sure when you have your graphs, write a title, either hand type it or use the meshes to generate dynamic titles based on what is going on on the screen. That quickly elevates your graphs and reports to the next level. We have a lot of space here, so I'm going to see what else we can bring. I think this one is looking good. So I'm going to bring this. Let's again adjust some of these things. And finally, in this space, I'm going to print show that growth trend. So here we have that. Finally, I'm going to bring this down and use this space to bring our logo and title. You can go to insert image. And here is our final HR dashboard. Do you like it? I just love this. It doesn't take much time. And when you use the true powers of Power Query and Power Pivot, you can actually build even cooler reports with your data. Let me know how you're doing with your data sets in the comments below. And if you want to learn a little bit more Power BI, check out the resources that I show on the screen as well as in the video description. I'll catch you somewhere else. Bye-bye.